Welcome back to Andy Cooks, the show with me. Andy, professional chef of 20 years, brings you along on my home cooking journey and trying to help us all become better home cooks. Because yes, being a chef doesn't make you automatically a good home cook. It does help though. And today, we're talking about pot stickers. They're actually a Chinese dish. Uh, and the, the Chinese name, which I'll put here, I'm not gonna try and pronounce it, uh, literally translates to pot stick. Hence the English term for it is a pot sticker. Uh, the Japanese obviously are pretty famous for them as well, we're calling them gyozas. And we're gonna do a more Japanese style one today uh, with pork and cabbage. And I'll teach you how to do the little lace part around the outside as well, because not only does that add another layer of crunch, which is super delicious, it's also really impressive at a dinner party. So let's get stuck in. What are you gonna need? So, pork mince, obviously. Uh, you don't want a lean pork mince. If you see lean pork mince, don't get it. You want something with a bit of fat in it. That fat's gonna carry a lot of flavor. Uh, and then cabbage. So this is a, a wombok, or a napa cabbage, I think it's called in the States, um, which works really well, because it's nice and tender. You can use a sugarloaf cabbage, or a savoy cabbage even, if you have to. Um, but you probably do want to blanch those first just really quickly in hot salted water if you do use one of those more uh, western style cabbages as they're a, a bit tougher. So they probably won't cook as well um, when you're steaming them in the gyoza wrapper. And then you're gonna season that with some spring onions or scallions, wherever you're from, some ginger, garlic, white pepper, uh, a little bit of sugar, salt, and just a touch of soya sauce. And we will make the lace out of a little bit of flour. You can use rice flour instead of uh, all-purpose flour, um, but I think the all-purpose flour works just as well. And then the gyoza wrappers. Now, uh, gyoza dough is pretty easy to make. It's not hard to make. The tricky part and the, the hard part is rolling them so that they're nice and flat and even, and they don't fall apart when you fry them. So I suggest, if you're not a skilled dim sum chef, to just buy them. I buy them. Um, I have made them in the past, but um, it's a Sunday afternoon, I'm cooking for my mates, I'm not trying to kind of invent, reinvent dim sum here. Uh, these ones are perfectly fine to use. They're not expensive. I think these were $3, uh, and it saves you a lot of hassle trying to learn how to roll them. But by all means, if you're on a journey of becoming a dim sum chef, um, it's a great skill to have, and to learn how to make your own wrappers. But uh, for the home cook, it's definitely, I don't think it's necessary. So let's make our mix. And to start, we're gonna attack this cabbage. Right, to process this cabbage straight down the middle. You're gonna see it's got this big core at the bottom and you wanna pretty aggressively take that out. Now when I say that, I mean um, those leaves down the bottom there are pretty, are pretty thick. So we'll take that big piece of core out and it's all nice and dirty as well. I'm gonna remove a few of these outside leaves as well. They're just a bit, um, a little bit ragged. And then from our half, in half again, and then we'll just chiffonade. So when we say chiffonade, basically means finely slice. Then I just like to, one or two kind of knife strikes down the middle, kind of mainly aiming at that core end. Now you don't want this to be mush, you want some texture there, but you also don't want big bits like that that I've missed. So just run your eye over it, make sure there's no big bits. And then you're gonna put that into a bowl. Now we're gonna season that pretty well with salt. And what we're trying to do here is remove some of that moisture. So that's sort of three tablespoons of fairly coarse salt. Um, and then we'll rinse this after to get rid of that salt. So mix that salt through evenly, and then we'll set that aside, and you'll see a whole bunch of moisture come out of that. We'll drain that moisture off, and then we're good to mix our pork mince in there. And don't be afraid to kind of get in there and squeeze it. All right, we'll put that to one side, and we'll get the rest of our seasonings ready. All right, spring onions. Give them a wash. I just like to run my knife down the middle at the end, so that it's thick at that, at that core end. And then again, just finely dice. In the bowl, so garlic, then you have four cloves. And we are gonna micro or finely grate these, so um, try not to smash them, it's just easier 
when you're microplaning them. Ginger, probably not gonna use that whole piece. I'm gonna take the ugly bits off and we'll peel the rest with a spoon. That in the bowl. Then pork mince, 500 grams. A little bit of soy sauce, a tablespoon and a half. Light sprinkling of white pepper, a teaspoon of sugar, and a little bit of salt as well. Just be careful because remember your cabbage will be salty already. This is the cabbage, you can see all the moisture that's coming out of that. So I'm just gonna rinse this into water. Then take a handful out, give it a really good squeeze, and into there. Now what you don't wanna do is pass this through like a colander or something. Because um, all what's happening here is all the dirt and salts fall into the bottom of that bowl. So if you poured this into a colander, uh, all the dirt would pour back onto it. So you want to leave it in the water and scoop it out like that. Olive, get out of the kitchen. Now the easiest way to mix this is with your hands. You've got clean hands, there's no reason why you can't mix this. Um, if you're worried about it because it's pork, feel free to put some gloves on. If you're really worried about it, feel free to use a utensil. But I've been doing this like this for years. It's never been an issue for me. So you want to mix this pretty well. You're also trying to bind in the fat molecules and with the rest of the proteins, which gives you a more consistent dumpling filling at the end. Um, and that's because the fat's kind of more evenly distributed into the mixture. Uh, it doesn't render out as easily. Basically gives you a more moist dumpling in the middle. Now, if you're concerned about uh, the seasoning at this point, um, you definitely can take a little piece of this out, make a little kind of patty, and just cook that in a pan just to tr double check your seasonings. And there we go, there's our mix. Now, this will keep in the fridge for a couple of days, so if you've got a, if you're having a, some mates over, uh, makes a great activity, um, making your mates make their own dumplings. So by all means, make this a couple of days ahead, uh, and then you can get it out um, and make dumplings with them. But we're not gonna do that, we're gonna make dumplings now. I'm gonna teach you how to do it. So, so to set up, you want your dumpling skins. Now this is a damp paper towel. You don't want these to dry out. If these dry out, they're no good. Okay, so keep that covered at all times. A little bowl with just some water in it, that's gonna help you seal it, and your mix. And I've got a tray here at the side um, with a light dusting of flour. Take a gyoza skin, your pork mixture, just off center of the middle. And you, if you can get it like a rugby ball shape, even better, it helps you out even more. Touch of water around the outside, flip it up, finger in the middle, so your index finger in the middle, and then you're gonna use, uh, if you're right-handed like me, you use your left hand to pinch and your right hand to push. So you're gonna pinch, push, pinch, push, pinch, Pinch, push, pinch, push, pinch, push. All the way along. Then you're gonna seal it up. And there's your gyoza, or pot sticker, or dumpling, whatever you wanna call it. <laughs> so they usually say you want at least seven folds. Now that, that's got eight in it, I think, which is probably one too many. Um, but yeah, you can't want seven folds. So, in the tray, and another one. Mixture just off center. Try and keep it in a rugby ball shape. It's gonna make your life easier. Also don't try and overfill them. Little touch of water on the outside edge. Up into a taco shape. Pinch, push, pinch, push. Pinch, push. Squeeze it tight. Make sure the shape's good. And there you go. All right, dipping sauce. So we'll get this ready before we cook our gyozas, pot stickers. So I like uh, two parts soy sauce to one part black vinegar. 
I don't have any black vinegar, which is really annoying. So I have got some rice wine vinegar here instead. Probably will be a little bit sweeter, but it is what it is. And chili oil. I like the good crunchy bits. Good tablespoon in there. And that's good to go. How we're we gonna get this lace is instead of using just water, we're gonna use flour and water. So got about a quarter of a cup of water there, and we're gonna use about three teaspoons of flour, a little bit of salt, and we're gonna mix that until it's all incorporated. So you want a fry pan, preferably non-stick, that you've got the lid for. Now I don't have the lid for this pan, but I've got another lid that almost, almost fits pretty well. So we'll use that one. To start, you're gonna put your, turn your pan on. Uh, high heat at the moment, but we probably might turn it down. You want a neutral flavored high temp oil. So I've got some peanut oil here, enough just to cover the bottom. Now you don't need to wait till this gets ripping hot, but you want a little bit of heat in it before you start putting your dumplings in. And you wanna make a really nice pretty pattern, because when you flip it out, they're gonna stay like that. We'll start putting our dumplings in. You wanna make sure you leave a little gap in between each one. So we're gonna get good color on these. Uh, once we've got the color, then we'll pour in our, our slurry and we'll put the lid on. All right, so we can hear that we've got some nice browning happening. Gonna make sure nothing's touching again. And then I'm gonna turn the temperature down a little bit. Cause you just wanna give, that, give it time. You don't want this to happen too fast. All right, so that's what we're looking for. Nice bit of color on the bottom. Make sure you've got the lid ready. All right, now we know the dumplings are cooked through, we can see because they're opaque and they're firm. We leave the lid off and let this lace dry out. What we're looking for is, I don't know if you can see that, that nice golden color there. We want that all over. So just move your pan around a bit. If you see spots that are looking really good, just take that part off the heat. Pretty close here. Good when it's uh, all move around in the pan as one piece. It's a little bit over here, I want a bit drier. All right, the moment of truth. Carefully gonna put a plate over them. Using a tea towel and a confident flip. There you go. Best part, time to eat one. I changed my mind, I wanted this one. How good does that look? Super crunchy. Mm -hmm. It was hot. <laughs> That's delicious. You know that extra lace really isn't that hard. And it's so worth it. The extra texture, super crunchy. Anyway, legends, as always, thank you so much for watching. Please check me a like, helps me out heaps. Subscribe if you're not, and I'll see you next week for another video. Peace.